Hello world, it's time to address yet another query related to BLE. Today we'll understand if it is possible to have multiple connections in BLE, which means is it possible for one central to be connected to many peripherals and one peripheral to be connected to more than one central device. That's what we are going to look at today. The BLE specification does not impose any restrictions on the number of connections for a BLE device. You can find the specific details in the course specification document under the permitted role and state combinations section. Ensure that you check the course specifications of the version that your device is using. From 4.1 onwards, the restrictions on role combinations have been removed. It means that a central device can connect with more than one peripheral. Similarly, a peripheral can connect with multiple centrals. And it is also possible for a device to be both a central and a peripheral at the same time. BLE protocol is asymmetric, which means that the memory and computing requirements for the central devices are higher than those for the peripheral devices. Usually, central devices have more memory, processing power, and bigger battery. Due to this, a central device can maintain multiple connections easily. Generally, a peripheral has limited resources in terms of memory, battery, and computing power. Thus, one has to be mindful of this asymmetry when designing, say, a peripheral, which has the capability of forming multiple connections at a time. What I mean is, although the specification allows multiple centrals to be connected to a peripheral and vice versa, there is always a practical limit on the number of devices that can be connected in a network. And this, as we saw earlier, depends entirely on the implementation of the stack and the availability of memory. Details of the maximum permitted connections can be found in the data sheets or user guides or documentation of your particular chipset or device. Let us look at the things that you may need to consider if, for example, you want to connect one peripheral device with multiple central devices. As a firmware developer, you will have to keep certain things in mind. Firstly, you will have to ensure that the peripheral continues advertising even after forming a connection with one central device. This has to be done because we are interested in establishing more than one connection. As the peripheral has one trans receiver, which functions in a half duplex manner, which is it either receives or sends, but does not do things simultaneously. Thus, at a time, only one central can be allowed to communicate with it. Time division multiplexing results in each central getting a particular time slot to interact with the peripheral. But how will you ensure that there is no overlap between two centrals or that only one central is allowed to talk at a time? For this, you can use something called as a priority table. Within this table, each central gets a particular rank. In case of an overlap between two centrals, the peripheral can update the connection parameters like connection interval, slave latency and supervision timeout based on the priority. Higher priority centrals can be granted access before the lower priority ones. Also, if a central device rejects the updated parameters, as obviously it has the authority to accept or reject them, then the peripheral can choose to either keep the connection, if say the central has got high priority, or drop the connection, if the central say has got lower priority in comparison with another overlapping central. Thus, to conclude, it is possible to have a peripheral capable of connecting with multiple centrals. But to incorporate this in your design, you should be mindful of memory, power and other constraints, as we just discussed, related to the peripheral device. Now, if you're interested in a design wherein a central device is capable of forming connections with, say, multiple peripherals, then in that case, I'll leave it up to you guys. Think about the points that you will need to consider for that kind of design. It'll almost be on the same lines. So it'll not be very much different to what we've discussed for the peripheral role. 
So that's it for today. Like and share the video and obviously hit the subscribe button and comment down if you want answers to specific queries related to Bluetooth low energy. And you can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. With that said, I'll see you in the next video. Bye world.